Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Oyin Kosola. I want to know if you can hear me. Can you all hear me? Hmm? Let me check. Okay, you can hear me. All right, I have a way of checking here. Whoo! Good to be here. <laughs> You know, I was trusting God in case if my flight got delayed or cancelled, I will have to go to Lagos. Somehow, I must be on seat for this meeting. And I'm so excited. Thank you so much. Um, thank you so much, Dr. Yukosala Labi. That, thank you for this meeting. Um, and then, Pastor BC, thank you, Ma. Oh, God. Oh, God. Thank you for simplifying that session and yet in the most ordinary um, extraordinary way you know i believe so much in the power of storytelling and that story was so so inspiring thank you for blessing us with that story um thank you thank you i'm i'm excited to be here amen all right so um to all the speakers in this amazing conference i want to celebrate you Thank you for being amazing. It's not easy. Thank you. Thank you. Um, okay. Um, I've been thinking, how can I handle a meeting like this and OTS? <laughs> God will help me. All right. Because I speak realistically. Anyone who knows me knows that. With me, black is black and um, <laughs> white is white. By the way, I'm wearing red. Because I saw that that the that the the blend the style, okay. So yes, this is going to be one session we will all not forget for the rest of our lives. Amen. So I saw something, and I'm going to start systematically. Can you help me reduce the pen? Bring down. All right, systematically, I'm going to teach systematically. Um, I saw something in the book of Hebrews chapter number 11. All right, Hebrews chapter number 11. I saw something and I did not seem to understand what I saw. All right, so I'm going to read from here. Hebrews chapter number 11 verse 32. Hebrews 11 verse 32. So the Bible was describing in Hebrews 11 what we call the all of fame of faith that is people whose lives were supernatural were extraordinary and i was amazed that in this all of fame of faith a lot was mentioned verse 31 says by faith the harlot rehab perished not with them that believed not and a lot all of fame of faith when she had received the spies with peace okay verse 32 say what more shall i say for time would fail me to tell of Gideon, powerful person, of Barak, of Samson, and of Jephthah, of David also, and Samuel and the prophet. Okay? Powerful lineup here. But I, I mean, I, I have a bit of, I have some concerns. Because in this lineup you have um, somebody called Jephthah. And I mean, I was amazed. What was Jephthah doing in this lineup? Okay. How do you call a man like Jephthah? How do you call him uh, a powerful man of faith? But I want us to see something about him and probably learn one or two things. Judges chapter number 11. Judges chapter number 11. Don't mind me, we're just getting started. Judges 11, and by the way, Jephthah is actually one of my best characters in the Bible, if not the best, for some reasons. Okay, Judges 11. So it's now Jephthah, the Gil um, Gileadite, was a mighty man of valor. And he was the son of an harlot. And Gilead begat Jephthah. And Gilead's wife bare him sons. 
and the wives of his sons grew up and they thrust out Jephthah and said to him, Thou shalt not inherit our father's house, for thou art the son of a strange woman. Amazing. Amazing story. Um, this man obviously had his own wife, but somehow went on to still impregnate an adult. One day they came and said, Jephthah, the father, the one who gave birth to you is dead. Say you, you, you cannot stay in the same house with us. You, you have no right. You cannot inherit our father's. Look, look at the description. Okay, Gilead was a um, Jephthah was a mighty man of valor, but he was the son of an a lot. His background. That was his background. It was something shameful. Everywhere he went to, ah, look at him, son of an alot. Look at him, yeah, yeah, boy. Look at him. Where's your mother? If, if life was so fair on you, why is your mother not here to raise you? Hmm? Your mother is on the street. Sometimes you'll be passing. Somebody will say, "I saw your mother yesterday." Somebody was eh, holding her against the wall. Eh? Look at your mother. Look at your life. You are, you are, you are, you are just the son of an alot. We saw your mother. Maybe somebody will even said your mom, your mother, somebody killed her beside the road. That's her corpse there. And that was it about um, Jephthah. Okay? And he had to grow through all those hostilities. And he had to go to grow through all um, those challenges. Because the Bible said the mother was an adult. First thing I want to say is that you are not your background. And the most powerful people on the face of the earth do not necessarily have everything put together. Okay? So, stop hiding your story. Stop trying to slim fit your experience to fit into somebody's insecurity. Stop hiding your story. Stop making it look as though you are your background. Okay? Stop mourning for the mistakes you didn't make. Nobody made it. You were born in that situation. Maybe there's somebody here and um, your mom, you, you, you were a product of a rape. Somebody raped your mom and then gave birth to you. And you seem to be reminding her of the situation. You look like a man whose face you can't remember. Okay? So you are not your past. Maybe you got pregnant out of wedlock and then um, got impregnated and you gave birth to a child. That's not the end of the world. And that lot was mentioned in all of him of faith. Okay, what's the worst that has happened? If Jesus did not say you were smelling when he came to save you and fill you with the Holy Ghost, you are not too bad for anybody's future. And that's the truth. Okay? So, sometimes what predicament does is that it cut away wrong people from your life. So since we know the predicament, it means only people who can go through that or do will come. Stop trying to adjust your story so that somebody can accept you and can make you feel special. All right. So I, I can I can really relate with the story of Jephthah because and I, so I'm going to share my story because people have said things. Maybe this man teaches the word. I mean, what, what's his experience? I've, I've attempted suicide 14 times. And funny enough, the leading cause of all those attempts was shame. And I'll tell you why. So I know what shame is. And I'm not a pastor who talks to people like he fell from heaven. I'm not interested in that. I'm not interested in that. Somebody reached out to me yesterday and said, I posted they are dragging you on Twitter. I said, as a generation, we need to learn how to stand to drag you. Forget it. We didn't jump here. We grew here. Okay, we are not here by mistake. Uh -huh. So, I, I know what shame is. In every way you want to describe shame. Okay? I know what... I, I never saw my mother at all in my life. The first time I ever laid my eyes on my mother... I was already about um, going to 19 or, or 27. First time ever. We had spoken on the phone. I was going to see her. We passed beside each other. 
mother could not recognize son and son has no picture of his mother. You know, just picture that life. Where you grew up, where you grew up. I remember there was a time that um, my, I was not in school because I was not feeling fine. And my classmate came to check me at home. Because I, I was not feeling fine for days. And I heard somebody screaming and telling them that, who are you looking for? Say, ah, you are looking for the son of an adult. Ah, you are looking for the son of a prostitute. And it was one fellow that was the guy there that was saying that to them. Oh, I came out. All the people who have never heard me talk in class, who doesn't know my story, who doesn't know this, and in front of them, say, look at him. The son of an adult. The son of, I mean, the woman I don't look know. You know, so... Oh, do I know? Do I have any defense? <laughs> I don't have any defense. No defense. I, I, I wept my eyes out. And many times I will lock myself in the room. And something as small as looking as ant on the wall, line up, will launch me into depression for days. And I will ask God questions. You made the ants. You gave them family. They are never alone. See, aunt, lining up. You left me alone in this cold world. You made even chicken and birds. You see them fly together. And here I am. What's this life? It's meaningless. I wanted to die. As children, they ask you, what do you want to become in the future? What do you want to become? I, don't have, I never mentioned anything I wanted to become in the future. I never, maybe the first time I mentioned anything I wanted to become in future, I must have, I think then I was already born again. That was the first time I now thought, yeah, I a medical doctor. You see, that was my first time because I thought there was no future. I mean, before any future would come, I would have killed myself. So what was the point? I, I mean, I, I, I felt I was going to successfully kill myself. And I was trying. Anybody who drank jig. And drank more than half, but we tried. You know, one time, um, I, somebody saw my video online, I mean, and then saw how I talk about how I survived so suicide attempt. And the fellow commented, he said, there are faster ways to kill yourself. Say, if you want to die, you could die. And the fellow is a pastor. What I'm telling you is that this world in itself, the system, owes you nothing about emotional healing. You better put yourself together. Because people who had salt on the injury, so you must recover. Don't expect pity. It is a serious world. It's not fair. Thousands of people can gang up and mob one person. That's how the world is. If you die, they pick another victim. Okay? So you can't live a life of pity. And say, pity me, this, this, this. You need to know my past. You have to be strong. You have to heal. You have to forgive. Because those who inflicted injury on, your, on you gave you a gift. They gave you strength. Particularly when you survive it. Everybody, it's a very it's an unfair world. That's been said. That's the way things are. And I've been not there. I'm sorry to you. I would have loved to use a word. They are not. <laughs> they don't have wisdom. Now let me say they don't have sense. Okay. People are clueless. Don't know Jack. Don't know much about life. Fighting your battles. When you look at your stories, you wonder and say, oh, God, will I ever imagine? One time, years back, I only have one, just one question on my note. Just one question I was asking God. Will I ever be happy? That was the only question. Just show me a glimpse that there's a day in my future that there is something in it called happiness. I know what pain is. I know what sorrow is. I know what shame is. I know what it means to be a black sheep amongst all the children. I know what it is for other children to eat bread, see an egg, and you will eat the backside of the bread with water. I know what it is for you not to be able to stand amongst your colleagues. I know what it is to fail in school. 
Not because you are not smart, but because of trauma. I know what it is for you to not be able to meet up with your colleagues. You have to move with low self-esteem. I know what it is to be bandaged with blood and injury around your head all the time because of abuse, domestic abuse, emotional. But we have survived it all. And I'm here telling you, you don't have to live in the shame. There's nothing there. Let me tell you something very, very important. Don't forget this statement. The system of the world does not owe you anything about healing. You have to find your own way to be strong. All right? Because you look at the story of Jeff I mean, look, look at how insensitive it could be. Look, uh, get away from us. You son of a prostitute. You son of, and they sent him out. And in Hebrews 11, 3, the Bible says, Jephthah fled from his brethren and dwelt in the land of Tob. And they were gathered unto, gathered vain men to Jephthah and he went out with them. People gathered, people who, you know, sometimes you are going through things and you know the things you are going through and you are wondering, why should anyone want to meet me for counseling? I know what, I'm not fine. I, I'm still going through my own troubles. I need help too. Because people recognize their captain. Sometimes you don't have to look like it. But that's your ordination. There's nothing anybody can do about it. There's absolutely nothing. People recognize their captain. David went to the cave of Adullam because of his own personal problem. But some people joined themselves with him. The Bible said that men, they were indebted. Men, they, they, have, they, they, they have their own issues. David had his own issues. And the Bible said he became a captain over them. So it came to pass in the process of time that the children of Ammon made war against, against the children of Israel. The elders of Gilead went to fetch Jephthah. So when there was war, they went to beg Jephthah. They went to beg him. And they said unto Jephthah, Come and be our captain, that we may fight the children of Ammon. And Jephthah said unto the elders of Gilead, Did you not hate me and expel me out of your father's house? And why are you come unto me now that when you are in distress? And the elders of Gilead said unto Jephthah, Therefore turn again, we turn again unto you now, that you may go out with us and fight against the king of Ammon and be the head over all the inhabitants of Gilead. Now you say you are calling a bastard to come and be your head now. Are you saying you are calling me now? There is a grace of headship on you. And that was what the devil came for. The devil doesn't know the future, but he can guess. Because he's an ancient being. And he's been around for a while. And there are things he's not been able to guess right. But the devil has, he, he seems to have an idea of somebody that the hand of God is upon. And he's going to do everything possible to fight you. He's going to do everything possible to, to bring you down. He's going to bring, do everything possible to shut you down with words. You will hear words that will shut down the area of your ordination. People will speak around the street. You may enter into a bus. And what this person is saying is fighting the most important thing about your life. The devil will come for your heart. He will come for your esteem. He will come for your emotions. He will fight you with everything he has. When you see these signs, stand your ground. You are a captain in the making. When you see battles on all sides, stand your ground. You are a captain in the making. Stand your ground. Don't fidget. Don't ask anyone to pity you. Stand. You are a captain in the making. And what the devil wants to do is to shut you down. Before you have an idea of who you are. Share the story of how God helped me deal. The day God took fear out of my life. People ask me. Apostle, the way you teach. Are you not afraid? I said, maybe I should be scared and I don't know. Actually, I'm, I don't think maybe I'm just bold. I feel maybe I should be scared and I don't know. I said, hey, should I be afraid? I said, I don't know. But I used to be a very timid person. In fact, when I started leading people, I couldn't correct anybody. Anything you do, you're on your own. I used to be very timid. Withdrawn from people... Just a lone ranger who didn't have friends and all that. But I remember a season came in my life 
and I had to survive. I had to survive. I was teaching in a school. I was teaching um, tutorials. I was taking mathematics tutorial for some public schools around. I was running a jam tutorial on behalf of the school I was teaching because I had debt to pay. I had debt to clear on campus. And all those works could not clear everything. So I had to start selling nodules by the wayside, all right, on the road. So when I'm done with my teaching in the morning, go to this school, take tutorial, then come back here and take my either physics or chemistry class. Then finally, I retire to sell nodules um, from, I think, about 7 p.m. till 10 p.m. So I had around 9.45 so we could carry the tables and everything home. Yes, I was selling nodules by the roadside. <laughs> okay, so I remember the first day uh, I, we're going to start the nodules. It was very close to the church. I had pastored, a new pastor came, didn't like me. Okay, and then said they should transfer me to a, another church where we had old people. And then it was very close to that church. That's the place where I got spot. And it was on a Tuesday. The first day I was going to start selling nodules was on a Tuesday. The church, they were going to close Bible study. And they will all, all the members will have to pass in front of my Indomie spot. And the pastor had already said, watch out for Femi Lazarus. He's not going to get anywhere in life. So imagine you have to be selling nodules in front of the place where the pastor has said they should watch out for you. You are not getting anywhere. And now you are going through a situation that is making that statement true. And when they were going to pass that day, as I checked the time that they will soon close, I wanted to escape, drop my apron and run. God said, stand. Ah, I wanted to escape. Let me run. Before these guys will catch me, God said, stand. I stood there. And the entire church were passing. They were passing. And people were mocking, were laughing, and pointing fingers. <laughs> Look at your friend, <laughs> Ido Misela. We've said it. <laughs> you didn't go for your own ordination. In this ministry, you have no future. <laughs> Look at where, it has, where he has ended up. It is too early to say a man ended up somewhere. It only came to pass. It is too early. My enemy don't mock me even though I'm falling. I will rise up again. It only came to pass. Okay, Mock and mock. and That day I was shaking as they were passing. By the time they all passed, fear left. After that moment, I could not find anything I could fear again. I couldn't. I look for fear. I can't find. When they passed that day, they took fear out of my life. Anybody who can't give you money should not insult your also. Mm, that was what I learned from there. Okay, so I ended up becoming the gallant Indomie seller, stroke pastor, stroke teacher. And guess what? The, the point where I was selling nodules became the hot spot for everybody. People will be passing. They will not know the reason why they just feel like coming. Somebody will come down to eat nodules and begin to cry. And start sharing about their lives. People were giving their life for Christ on a daily basis. When that season passed, I cleared my debt. I was able to graduate. In fact, I remember for me to even clear my debt. I've seen things in this life. Some of you have seen things too. But there's no award <laughs> for who I've seen things the most. I remember there was a time like that. I went to meet one of my sisters. Mm -hmm. for money so I could have what I had on ground. He said, Femiko, so that's, there's no money. Yeah, but there's somebody that is owing our money in, in the market. Say, let's go there. So we went to that market. And then, <laughs> these are stories you've never heard. And then the person that was owing our money and all those things, as he went to meet the person, the person said, there's no money. Ah, this is my auntie. Broke mm -hmm. down in tears in the market. Started wailing. Ah, Say, ah, I hear me. If only you people know that this boy should not be suffering like this. this and she was crying. People gathered in the market. Kilo Shelle, what happened? Kilo Day, what happened? People say, come in, what happened? I was there. My eyes were soaked with tears. I was holding it. They say, ah, oh, school needs money for school. Ah. Then, 
While she was crying, a scarf had fallen. A woman picked the scarf that fell, laid the scarf on the ground. People started giving money, started dropping money. 200 naira, 100 naira, 500 naira. People started dropping. And I stood there that day, looking at my life. Am I the one they are contributing money for, like a beggar in the market? If it was now that the people, everything will be on social media, it will be on social media. People were coming. Eh? The man said, come on, stop crying. 200 naira, this, this. And I wept. It was until then I cried. And I look at my auntie on the floor and I said to myself, my father, my God, there is nothing you have given me that this woman will ever have to cry to you for. And I've stood by that word. So there are issues. We are the ones that knows the things we have survived. Cut away the shame. The stories of the past is the survival kit of those coming behind. Don't deny them because you want to fit into somebody's superficial, excellent narrative. That's the mistake we make in the body of Christ. Everybody just have excellent stories. What did God take you through? What have you survived? What are the lessons? Where are you coming from? Tell us about your journey. Don't let shame hinder the next generation from learning the lessons as it is. Whatever it is, it only came to pass. <laughs> Amen. So they went back to call Jephthah. Say, Jephthah, come and be our captain. Please. And I'm telling somebody here, some people who have mocked you and laughed at you and said, look at your life. This, this, they are coming back. Okay? They are coming back. Don't run after them. Sit down. Man your craft. Do the things you are doing. Man your craft. Don't let anybody shut you down. There are people who are highly opinionated. They will shut you down and be the first to blame you for shutting down. They will ground you and march on your head and be the first to insult you for being available to be matched in the first place. Okay? But you must understand that as far as this life is concerned, you must stand your ground. The first place the word shame was mentioned in the Bible was in the book of Genesis, chapter number 3. God had told Adam and Eve to... Um, let, me, let me be sure I'm, I'm, I'm according to my time. Um, I don't want to pass my time. I'm always time conscious. So God told Adam and Eve not to eat of the tree in the middle of the garden. Long story short, you know the story. Eve ate, then kept for her husband. And then the both of them saw that they were naked, or both of them became naked. And the Bible said, in the cool of the evening, they heard the voice of God walking in the garden, and they hid themselves. And God called to Adam and said, Adam, Adam, where are thou? And he said, I hid myself, for I am naked. And God said, who told you that you are naked? It means shame is not a natural occurrence. It is a product of a voice that is external and is foreign to the voice of the Holy Ghost on your inside. The Holy Spirit can never use your predicament to shame you. If you made a mistake and you are hearing a voice saying, now you are grounded, you are finished, that cannot be the Holy Spirit. Every voice that comes from God comes for edification, for comfort, and for strength. That's the characteristics of the nature of God's voice. And God said to them, he said, who told you that you are naked? It means sin is not the hand. Sin brings men to the point of hearing a voice that is foreign. When you sin, then the devil now uses the opportunity to tell you the things he has always wanted to tell you. That your future is over. That you are no longer qualified for what God showed you. That the future you saw in that vision, you are no longer the one for it. That everything God said he will do with you, it can't be you anymore. The devil used the opportunity to tell you the things he has always wanted to tell you. And guess what? The devil cannot speak the truth, even if he tries to. So, anything he says, you can always be sure it is 100% lies. Romans 8 verse 1 says, There is now therefore no condemnation to them who are in Christ Jesus. There is now therefore no condemnation to them who are in Christ Jesus. Let me, let me, let me, let me have this. You know, growing up, I used to look at other kids and feel, Oh God, Look at their mommy. On Sunday, they will come down from the car 
their daddy, their mommy will come and help them adjust their color and adjust everything and clean their eyes. I, I, I don't know what it means to have a mother. We we'll adjust the color and everything. Me, I'm come to church with bandage, with plaster. My head has been hit against the wall, bleeding every time. I was a popular fan, a customer in chemist. I remember one time I was in primary four. I don't want to mention who this the person, all right, that was so I just finished sieving water, rice, rice. You know when you sieve rice and pour the water on my back. I screamed. I screamed my lungs out. Say, hey, what happened to you? What happened to you? I said nothing. I held that pen in primary school. Throughout in class, I was in distress. I was shaking. I couldn't learn. I was weeping. My, I was in. I couldn't touch my back. My clothes at my back had become hard, like starch. By the time I came back home, I was trying to pull my shirt. I couldn't pull. My cousin brother came and said, "What's wrong with you? Can you go and pull the shirt?" My whole back peeled. My entire back peeled off. I will look at other children and say, hey, 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 see how perfect they are. Look at their lives. But you know the truth? Today I look back and I thank God for the battles that taught me strength. I thought I used to, I thank God for the pain that taught me to appreciate ease. Sometimes you may never know the value of life. Until you have seen the opposite. Some of you probably don't even have an idea. I look at all my friends. I say, oh, look at them. Look at my friends. Recently, I was together with all of them. And then we were gisting. And I, I was shocked when they were saying things like, we are proud to be your friend. You know, I used to tell people about you. The Apostle Lazarus, my friend, we grew up together. This, this, this. Ah, Really? So me too can never become somebody that somebody is proud to say is his friend. Ants do cross. Ants do cross. Don't write off yourself. You are carrying a child out of wedlock. Uh -huh. Is that the end of the world? Ants do cross. Some of the biggest things God is doing comes in simple and small package so that God can hide what he's doing. Sometimes you are not small. God is hiding you in small package because you may not be able to survive the attack that will come if the exposure is too soon and God is just hiding you. Okay? Trust the process. Trust what God is doing. Despise the shield. Don't let it hold you down. Don't get yourself into more trouble because you are afraid and all that. All right. Trust what God is doing with your life. Hands do cross. Hands do cross. So let me begin to wrap this up. So when God told Adam, God said to him, Nakedness can't be a consciousness until you are told. Some of you believe you are not fine. Who told you? Some of you believe that your nose is one kind. Who told you? And I know that much more when you look at the mirror, you don't see what you look like. You see what you have heard. When people are still running with all those trauma till now, somebody told you as a child, look at the shape of your head. Maybe they even gave you a nickname. That's the devil hiding behind to use their words to fight you. Yeah, to every question, I'm naked, I'm, I'm the same question is what God is still asking. Who told you? Uh, my life is over. I can no longer be the one that like God can you. I wish I wish God can see you somebody like me. Who told you? Who told you that God can use somebody like you? Who told you? Who told you that? There's even anything that's called somebody like you. What do you mean by the word somebody like me? Are you talking about the one that is in Christ, that is a new creature? That all things are passed away? What's the worst you have done? Who told you? 
sin is not the hand. It is an avenue for the devil to make you believe something. Let me say this to you. The woman of God we call Catherine Kuman today. Now everybody say Catherine Kuman, Catherine Kuman. Catherine Kuman's story or life really began after a major mistake. Kuma was married to a pastor. They invited an evangelist to their church to preach. Very handsome evangelist. Kuman fell in love with the evangelist. And the both of them, imagine pastor's wife and the evangelist, they ran away with each other for years. She was out of ministry. I can't remember precisely whether for 16 years. It was after that incident that she came back. It was after that that we began to hear about this cool man. It was from that hatches that God brought out the fragrance. That we now say, cool man this, cool man that. Sometimes all the things you call problem, they are just you know, God-given opportunity to, to rely absolutely on God. The grace of God is not needed where a man is completely strong. When the strength of God comes and he finds strength, he leaves. This thing only rests where there is a need for God. Your name is totally soiled. Your, your, everybody now knows the thing about your life that you have made this mistake. That is exactly when you now need to walk in grace. So if anything happens to you now, or when anything happens to you, God can now take all the glory that he brought you from that ashes. Never let anyone cause you to bury your head in shame. Don't believe the voice of the enemy. Don't let anything throw you back. Don't hide your stories. And also don't share the stories prematurely. Very important. Because there is such a thing as sharing prematurely and you share before an audience that is not ready. And they will cut you to sizes. Somebody says, what about if I have a past and I'm in a relationship and this? You don't share your past in a relationship. You share with somebody who is committed to you. There are relationships with people who are not committed to you. Is that okay now? And whenever the devil reminds you of your past, remind him of his future. Your past is gone. It is thrown into the ocean of forgetfulness, no matter what the mistake is. The future of the devil is sealed. He can't escape it. At the end of the day, people will narrowly look at him and say, is this the man that caused confusion everywhere? And he'll be cast into the lake of fire. So when the devil reminds you of your past, remind him of his future. Amen. And I want to believe that somebody, you know, tonight has, you know, heard from heaven. And um, maybe this is just what you needed at this season to be able to come into what God wants to bring you to. Um, maybe you have been getting it all wrong and you have been trying to get people to pity you. Maybe you... You have been getting all wrong and you have been wallowing in that pain of the mistakes you made and keep sharing yourself out with those who hate you. Who don't carry what it takes to bring you back. Maybe you need to change your circle. Maybe you need to get out of the midst of those who are shaming you with the things of the past so you can heal. Maybe these are the mistakes you've been making. And I just want to, you know, release words. Bless you. Maybe... And let me let me also add this. Um, like um Pastor shared when she ministered ahead of me, maybe you have stayed at this spot for too long. And you are also asking that question like me. Like, will I ever be happy in this life? Will that day ever come? That there'll be no problem. Will my joy ever be full? I've come to tell you, yes. Eyes have not seen, ears have not heard. And as it come to your own imagination, what God has prepared for them that love him. If God shows you everything now, you probably won't believe. That's why it shows you in bits and pieces. It shows you the part you can handle part-time. And I've come to announce to you that situation is not in your hand. Wake up. Dust yourself. Go back and pick the vision you dropped. You used to sing, you stopped singing. You used to write, you stop writing. You used to speak, you stop speaking. 
See, intimidation will never stop. People will still accuse you. Get up and get back. Don't let anyone shut you down. Many of these people are just shallow. I'm telling you, there's nothing there. Get up. Get back in the race. Pick the things you dropped. Go back to the things God said to you. Stop locking yourself up and crying. Because when there's depression, there'll be toys and addictions will come in. You can't continue like that. You can't keep thinking you are a second-handed girl because you have a child. Having a child out of wedlock is not cancer. Somebody is coming that will love you and that child. And the fact that you are pregnant for someone doesn't mean you marry the person. Sometimes you've been pregnant for a fool. It's okay, you are not a fool. But you have been pregnant for a fool. Move on. Pick your life again. And start. Go back to school. Finish. Don't let anything swallow you up. This life is graveyard of for many giftings and talents and it will move on without flinching. You will not be part of those swallowed glories in the name of Jesus. So you have to dust yourself up and tell yourself, I will finish what I started. Some of you left certain places out of shame. Go back! I will finish what I started. So people, some of us are around. We're not preaching the message a generation to hear. I want to tell you nothing but the truth. They will drag God from now to tomorrow. I told my people, we are going to the midst of the thick darkness of the vines of hate on social media. We will stay there, absorb all the hate, and release life. I just want to show a generation that this thing is not deep. It's not deep. He's a fool. He's a bastard. Do you know where we are coming from? We have a work to do. I will do that work while it is called today. Amen. And I decree over somebody under the sound of my voice that everything that looks like shame with which the devil has paralyzed your minds, your visions, they are out of the way. You are coming out strong. You are coming out strong. You are coming out better. In the name of Jesus, you are coming out strong. You are coming out better. You will not be grounded. Everything you have left, receive courage to pick them back. In the name of Jesus, nothing dies in your hands. It is done. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. I want to appreciate Dr. Oinkosola Alabi. Thank you for this amazing opportunity to be a blessing. And let, let me also say this. Um, she, she never asked me to say this. But I, I just want to beg in the name of Jesus. There are very few people doing what she's doing. Um, the body of Christ for now does not even think there's anything like mental health issues. Um, does not even, sometimes we just people say that there are mental health issues who feel they are demonic or something like that. And this is a ministry that we all need to support. And I, I want to beg. I, I look at our media team, our technical, I don't know, only God knows what she has spent to put this together. And I think they put the account details the other time, please. Okay, it's also on the screen, please. Let's support this. Our ministry will also send our own um, offering or seed um, to connect and bless God for what is going on. Thank you so much for having me here this evening. Sorry, I, I, I never really use my time anywhere. I'm giving time. I just stick for a short time and I round up. Thank you so much, Dr. Inkosala. And thank you, everybody, for having me. God bless you.